have identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. There are fears a rapidly spreading virus has reached Australia. This is a rapidly emerging situation. Where there is not a cause for alarm. The first U.S. case has been detected. There's confirmation the coronavirus has reached Australia. China is urging its citizens not to travel abroad as it struggles to contain the virus. We will be standing up Christmas Island as a quarantine area. Foreign nationals coming from China are now banned from entering the country. I have today declared that the coronavirus presents a public health emergency in the United States. The COVID-19 pandemic changed everything. Lockdowns and social distancing forced people to drastically alter the way they live. How people provided for themselves and their families was immediately impacted. The work from home movement changed people's needs and motivations. This presentation will analyze which needs were changed and how their motivations have been altered. We will also examine how the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the job market. Next, we will review the altered needs of employees and candidates. Lastly, we will examine how employee engagement and motivation has changed within the framework of the hierarchy of needs pyramid. In the end, we will suggest ways on how companies and organizations can adapt to the changing needs of their employees in order to succeed and proceed in this post-pandemic reality. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the need to proceed. How the pandemic altered the needs of employees, employee engagement, and motivation by Mike Avincula, Sarah Barnes, and Alexandra Filenko. To first understand how humans' needs and motivations change from the pandemic. It is important to examine how people acquire their needs and motivation. By examining Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we will have a better understanding of how people acquire these needs and motivation. Maslow's needs hierarchy condensed and organized the dozens of previously studied drives, which he called primary needs, into five basic categories, organized in a hierarchy from lowest to highest. Physiological, the need for food, air, and water, and shelter. Safety, the need for security and stability. Belongingness and love, the need for interaction with and affection from others. Esteem, the need for self-esteem and social esteem and status. And lastly, self-actualization, the need for self-fulfillment and realization of one's potential. Maslow proposed that we are motivated simultaneously by several needs, but the strongest motivations comes from the lowest unsatisfied need. When satisfied, the next higher need in the hierarchy becomes the strongest motivator and remain so even if never satisfied. The theory recognized that motivation can be shaped by human thoughts, such as personal values, whereas earlier motivation experts focus mainly on how instincts motivate behavior. Maslow's positive perspective is revealed in his emphasis on growth needs and self-actualization, suggesting that people are naturally motivated to reach their potential. Intrinsic and extrinsic motivation are another theory on how people acquire their motivation. Intrinsic motivation occurs when people are fulfilling their needs for competence and autonomy by engaging in the activity itself rather than from an externally controlled outcome of that, of that activity. Whereas extrinsic motivation occurs when people want to engage in an activity for instrumental reasons to receive something that is beyond their personal control. Extrinsic motivators exist throughout organizations, such as pay incentives, recognition awards, and frequent reminders from the boss about work deadlines.
Next, I'm going to talk about how the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the job market. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, it completely disrupted the global job market. Millions of people were laid off or lost their jobs entirely, with other sectors having to rapidly adjust to remote working. A report from the McKinsey Global Institute outlined that the pandemic accelerated job trends that were already starting to manifest in the job market. We were slowly starting to see a shift in jobs from service-based to technical-based. This section will highlight three of the key areas in which the pandemic has changed the job market. We will be talking about remote work, automation, and post-secondary education. First, we'll be talking about remote work. During the pandemic, a lot of office jobs required an in-person presence. When the pandemic hit, office jobs were forced to adapt to remote work at an accelerated rate. While working remotely, organizations were still actively recruiting new employees who would end up working fully remotely. Remote work allowed recruiters to look beyond the local job market to source candidates from remote areas or even other provinces and countries. There is a growing desire from workers who do not wish to fully return to the office and would prefer a hybrid or fully remote option. According to a global survey by LHH and the ADECO Group, over 62% of Canadians want to continue working remotely, at least 40% of their work week. The main issue with working remotely in the job market today is that only 39% of Canadian workers hold jobs that can be done remotely. To increase the number of remote jobs in Canada, we are starting to see a trend towards automation and the positions required to complete this automation. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, companies were faced with labor shortages and increased labor costs and were forced to turn to automating some services. With organizations turning to automation, this helps to reduce the labor costs for smaller businesses. With the increased cost of living as well as the cost of fuel, businesses are having to look at ways that they can reduce labor costs by bringing in automation. During the pandemic, we saw a shift in employees leaving the service sector for more technical-based jobs. A good number of service-based industries that were not deemed essential were forced to close, and those workers looked for alternative careers. With businesses reopening, a lot of those service-based workers have not returned to their previous sectors. Businesses right now are faced with an unemployment crisis where they are not able to fill positions and they are having to resort to automation. A recent example of this type of automation can be seen at the Happy Lamb Hot Pot restaurant in Coquitlam, British Columbia. This restaurant has recently deployed robot servers where they will deliver your food to your table once you have completed the order by tablet. Therefore, removing the need for a physical server to take your order and deliver your food. Toronto's Kensington Market recently deployed a fully automated robo cafe to serve coffee to patrons. It is automation like the robot cat at the Happy Lamb Hot Pot restaurant and the robo cafe that allows businesses to continue to serve their customers while keeping labor costs down and resolving the employee shortage issue. Approximately one in five Canadian workers' jobs are potentially at risk due to this type of automation. With automation comes an increase in technology. The labor market is suddenly inundated with an increase of technical-based positions. The post-secondary sector in British Columbia was one of the markets that saw a significant growth during the COVID-19 pandemic. With service sector workers finding themselves without jobs, some chose to enroll full-time at post-secondary institutions. With the increased cost of living, higher paid positions are fueling the changes in the job market. In a lot of areas, education is a significant factor in those employees gaining higher paid jobs. In 2020, the enrollment of post-secondary students increased on average 2.4% compared to the previous year. The top four schools in British Columbia grew on average six times from 2019 to 2020, with the government also stepping in by increasing the operating grants in 2020 compared to that of 2019. This image outlines the growth in post-secondary education in the year 2020 compared to that of the previous year. Next, I'm going to talk about how pandemic changed employee needs and expectations. In a recent Oracle AI at Work study, 88% of the interviewed employees said the meaning of success has changed for them post-pandemic. And then they are now prioritizing things like safety, mental health, and work-life balance. First, we're going to talk about safety. Being exposed to the health risks from a highly contagious virus has made people more alert about the health policies and procedures at work. 
Considering Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if employees' basic needs for a safe and compliant workplace are not met, their trust and leadership and their engagement with their work will immediately start deteriorate. Employers can put such measures in place through simple steps like improving office ventilation and adapting stricter cleaning regimens. They should also reconfigure common spaces to make them safer and more accessible for employees in and outside of the office. They can also introduce comprehensive sick leave policy that would allow employees not to worry about taking a paid time off when they need to. The last one is integrating integrated video conferencing that would allow in-office employees to connect with their remote colleagues seamlessly. Touchless access solutions can also help to reduce the spread of potentially harmful germs. Next one is work-life balance. For workers, one of the most significant benefits of work arrangements during pandemic has become the ability to take back more of their valuable personal time. Some chose to spend more time with their families, while others were able to create their own work schedules that allowed them to be even more productive at work. Either way, employees don't, do, don't seem like they want to give up control of their time after the pandemic is over. According to the McKinsey report, more than half of employees said they want more flexible hybrid virtual working models, where employees are sometimes on premises and sometimes working remotely. Employees across industries and roles are insisting on continuing a more flexible approach to their work routines, and employers will need to consider that expectation in order to benefit everyone. As a way to promote flexibility, employers can focus on aspects such as extended parental leave, sick leave, flexible hours, and work from home policies, as well as introducing sick days for unexpected events like COVID-19. Between flexible schedules and opportunities for remote work, there are ways for organizations of all kinds to meet their employees' newfound need for control over their time. And the last one, but not least, is mental health. During the pandemic, people have been struggling with feelings of isolation, being overwhelmed by having to balance caregiving and work and fear of unknown. That's why mental health care is a significant issue that employees want their employer to show that they really take seriously. A national study carried out by Canada's leading human resources organization, CPHR Canada, found that future employees will likely search for businesses who have put mental health as a priority for their HR plans. More than 85% of the respondents think employers should be focused on implementing mental health programs in the workplace. As an employer, it's important to ask your health insurance provider about including the mental health services in their packages. It can be done through, um, through via, via different channels. It can be telehealth options, digital condition management tools also available online. Another one is setting up an employee assistant program. Employee assistant program services are typically provided at no cost to the employee, and the services may be delivered in person by telephone or through information technology media, which is quite convenient. Because employee assistance uh, programs delivery models and services vary considerably, it's important for employers to um, analyze and find the most appropriate for their organization. It's also important to be transparent with employees and communicate clearly about the benefits of these programs and what company does to ensure their mental health. As we have now explained how the pandemic changed the job market and employees' needs, we will now examine how employee engagement and motivation was changed within the workplace utilizing the hierarchy of needs pyramid framework. To recap, Maslow's hierarchy of needs pyramid is arranged from highest need to lowest need, meaning that a person's needs change based on which lowest satisfied need is unfulfilled and will remain so until filled. First, we'll look at how the job market changed employee engagement and motivation. Remote work affected people's safety needs, meaning that 
employers needed to have people work remotely uh, in order to have a safer environment. Automation was a, a direct correlation to uh, people working remotely as they needed to shift the workplace to remote rather than in the office to prevent the spread of the virus. Post-secondary education affected employee motivation through self-actualization and basically had employees seek out their true potential. Also, it touched on how people can be intrinsically motivated looking at satisfaction from the job itself versus extrinsic motivation such as even though they get higher pay they would choose to have a more meaningful job they could also be in extrinsically motivated as going through post-secondary education could increase their pay and this time away from work for example may have had employees realize that they would like to have changes in their careers. Now we look at the employee changes and how their engagement and motivation within the hierarchy needs pyramid may have changed. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, safety is a direct correlation to Maslow's safety needs as they wanted to remain safe from the dangerous spread of the virus. Mental health affected the belongingness and love needs. As people worked remotely, they were more isolated from other workers, and that need was drastically impacted. Work-life balance changes affected both safety needs and belongingness and love needs. As people wanted to spend more time with their families, and now that employers were offering that option, that category may have seen unfulfilled to most people. In summary, the pandemic changed a lot of needs and motivations within employees and their engagement levels fluctuated drastically during that pandemic. Our journey through the need to proceed has finally come to an end. Our roadmap included First, examination of Maslow's hierarchy of needs pyramid and intrinsic and extrinsic motivation theories. Next, we explained how the pandemic altered the needs of employees as well as changed the job market. Lastly, we compared employee motivation and engagement in the workplace with Maslow's hierarchy of needs pyramid. Ultimately, employers will have to evolve and adapt to the changing needs of employees to proceed through this new job market. Companies will have to establish an increase of social interactions online and offline as employees' needs of belongingness and love were drastically affected and isolation from remote work increased. Companies will need to emphasize assistance on mental health and offer employees employee assistance programs as the isolation from remote work drastically affected people's mental health. Lastly, companies will need to promote work-life balance as employees now are more seeking a better balance between their lives and their employment from this pandemic era. Companies that follow these steps and adhere to this guidance will continue to strive through this new reality. Thank you all for your time, and we look forward to any questions or comments you may have.